Hello everyone, this is Lolly. Welcome back to my channel. This is April and my project for Craft Text in April involves the linen color. This is the color of the month from Craft Text and I want to show you these beautiful flowers I've been making and turning into bracelets and embellishments. So stay tuned on how to make these. Okay, so what I did was I took a three inch wide strip of the Craft Text pre-washed. This is the linen color. And I ran the largest four dies through it. And this is a Dress My Craft flower die set. I will leave you the link down below. Uh, when doing die cutting on the Craft Text, you may need to roll it through twice uh, through your machine. So I have three sets of these flowers so I can show you three different ways that I'm playing with these. Okay, the first one is I want to play around with some Distress Inks. So I'm going to pick out a couple colors that I want to work with. I'm feeling kind of eastery. Let's go with this shaded lilac. Maybe, how about this one, the ripe persimmon? Let's use these two colors. Now if you're using a light color craft text, it helps. Okay, let me get the inks out for these. Okay, let's use this instead of the, instead of this pad here. We'll use this one so I can get in the center really well. I'm doing the center and I'm just coming a little bit out into the petals. Now we will grab this for the right persimmon. And we're just going to go over the edges a little bit here. You could use three colors as well and get one in the center of the petal here. And I'm not trying to get these to all look the same because obviously on a flower it wouldn't look all the same. So don't fret over it. Alrighty. Now I'm going to take a black Sharpie and starting with the center, I'm going to just flick out like this to make some veins. I'm not pushing all the way. I'm lifting the pen up as I go. What I'm going to do is I have this set by McGill. My Dress My Craft has theirs as well. It's just a flower making set. I'm going to take the largest ball here, turn it over, and I'm going to go and push hard and go in circles around the petals here, sort of on the top or ex the last one third of the petal. This is a lot easier with cardstock than craft text. However, um, the reason I'm using craft text instead of cardstock is that it makes a flower that will stand the test of time. Uh, the cardstock ones I do and the paperweight text weight ones I do, they get really brittle so and are thin and they fall apart. So this way you have a flower that's going to last whether you want it in a hair barrette or on a journal. Now we turn it over and we just do that in the center. And there you go. So we do that to the rest of them and I will speed up the video. Now I'm going to switch down to the next smallest one of these. Okay. Let's put that aside. That is beautiful. Okay, now we're going to glue those together. Now I want to use the Fabri-Tac instead of paper glue. I want to get a really good hold with these. Starting with the large one. And then I'm going to take this and turn the petals so they go in between the petals of the other flower. And hold that down for a second. And put these in the space between those ones. Now if you have long fingernails and you can't push down in the center of this flower, you can use like the end of a, a pencil eraser like this. And just make sure you push straight down and don't slant at an angle. Just hold that for about five to ten seconds. It's very pretty. I'm going to pick this up 
And what I'm going to do is to glue this in. It's just a cheap flat uh, back piece, like a rhinestone. And I'm going to use the power tack to adhere that. Drop that into place. Now you'll want to set this aside for about 20 minutes. Isn't that pretty? It's actually very fast to do that, especially if you're making a whole lot of them. That's a good way to make a flower, just to do all the die cuts. Okay, the next way I want to show you is by using your acrylic paints. Now I'm going to put this Teflon mat under here. I have some interesting colors I want to play with. This is a new thing uh, from Folk Art I, was, I got at Creativation. This is Color Shift Acrylic Paint Metallic Gloss Finish. And this is Brushed Metal Acrylic Paint. Let's see what those do for us. We have to open these up. Normally I like to have a spray bottle, uh, a mister with water in it. But as I was cleaning my craft room... Uh, I don't know where I put that, so I'm still working on bringing everything back in here. That's pretty. So I do have some water here. I'll get my brush wet a little bit. Now, Craftex uh, absorbs paints very quickly. So if you want, you can you can get your project wet to begin with. I'm just adding some water here. And that will help the paint to, to go on smoothly instead of kind of clunky. Okay, let's get this wet. Now, although this is it's a met metallic, I am brushing it so thin um, that it's not going to be quite so metallic. It doesn't take much, as you can see. I'm hardly use any of my original paint here. Now I'm just going to hit this gold around the edges here. And I'm dry brushing this because I don't want it to be watered down. And I'm okay if I let Craft Tech show between the two colors here because that adds a third color. Okay, and I'm going to pause the camera and come back when I am done with all of these. Okay, so I finished that one. Now I want to show you what this looks like. Um, I wasn't that happy with it because I thought I was going to like how much gold was in there. But on reflection, I think it's too much gold for me. So the next one I did with the same inside color. But I just did the tips of the petals with the gold paint. And then for the veins in the um, flower, instead of using a black Sharpie, I used this, which is the white Signo Uniball, Uni Uniball, excuse me. And so that's how I made the veins in that one. I think it really turned out cute. And then I decided what about using the denim craft text from last month. And so I painted white on those tips, makes it very striking. And I have purple on the inside. And then what I discovered that I really like is to use a glimmer mist on it. And I'm using this, which is Sheer Shimmer by Imagine. And Bobby, thank you for recommending this to me. I'm loving it. So I took one of the first ones I have, and I'm going to put this in the black and see if that helps you to see the difference between this one with no shimmer and this one with shimmer. So let's see if we can get in there. Okay, the one on the right has the shimmer, and I love it. So I think that's going to be a real something I'm really excited about. So while I have this out, I'm going to go ahead and shimmer these up. And I just do several spurts until I can really see it. Now, of course, it's not going to have the same effect on the acrylic paint. I'm going to let this set aside to dry, and we're going to talk about what to do with these. So I mentioned before you can use them as embellishments. Oops, I need to get this one, too, that didn't get any shimmer. All right, so I want to take this one and do something with it. Now, I had mentioned you can put it on journals, you can put them on cards, but with being craft text, these are going to be really durable. You could use it as a paper clip, a charm, not a charm, but on the end of the paper clip. Uh, but what I think I want to do is make a bracelet with this. So uh, I picked up one of these. At, it was either Hobby Lobby or Michael's. And I think it was Michael's. I'm 
No, this was Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to open this up. This is a cuff bracelet. And it's designed for putting a leather strip in there. And so I've measured it. I'm going to cut a piece of craft text that will fit in there. Okay. So according to my measurements, this should fit in there. Ooh, perfectly. Then I will glue that in with some power tack. I may have to trim off just a little bit on this end because I know I made it a little long, but I just think that looks so much like leather. The question is, ooh, I thought about using the same color distress ink on the edges of this, but I decided not to because I want this to really pop up as being the focal part of this. You could do gemstones or whatever your choice is on here. I'm going to smooth this around. Looks like it goes under the metal. There it does. It goes under the metal. I'm coming around here to see just a pinch off on that. And then if you don't have any of these, don't worry about it because I'm going to show you another way just to make a bracelet. Okay, I'm going to attach this with PowerTech and I will be back. Okay, so I have that attached right now and I have binder clips on the two ends to hold that down while that sets up. And then all I need to do is to use the power tack as well to adhere that flower right in the center of that. Now, if you're just making a bracelet out of the craft text, that is doable too. And let's look at that. The first thing you want to do is grab yourself a tape measure. And for your wrist, figure out where you want this comfortably. So if I look right here, I see it about seven inches is comfortable for me, but on a wider cuff or a wider bracelet, I need to make it bigger, like seven and a half, like that. And that way it gives it room to slide around. But I also need room to attach this, so I'm going to give myself an extra half an inch and make it eight inches long. Now, how wide you want it is up to you. This one is under two inches. It's about one and three quarter to one and seven eighths. But, you know, if you want to use one of these flowers, if you want the bracelet to stick out on either side, it still won't because this is wider than that. So I'm thinking just for this, two inches is really big. I think one and three quarters by eight, I'll do that. So that's what that strip looks like. You could distress the edges if you wish, uh, not necessary. And then if you don't like the way it's wrinkled, you can always press it. And I think I might even round the corners on this. Oops, sorry, round the corners on this one. On the quarter inch here, at least on the part. Yeah, let's do both. Okay. Alrighty, now I need to get my uh, plastic snaps. Okay, so I'm using the cam snaps. And I'm going to look at what color snap I want to go with this. Probably white would be the most logical option. Little tools here. Everything else I have is rather bright. Ooh, I do have this kind of an off-white. I think I'll use this. We need two of the ones that look like tacks, and then we need one convex and one concave. And a pencil is helpful. So, I'm just going to mark where the center would be. Overlap that. And I'm going to poke the hole where these are going to go in. There, okay, so I'm going to put the smooth side up and either the convex or the concave. Okay. And then the smooth side goes from the underneath here. That's what's going to be against your skin. And then the other one. Okay. So then that snaps on there. And all we need to do is glue one of our flowers on. We have this one. I think I'll put that right in the center there. And this one is probably ready now for me to glue that one on. Now I had said I was going to show you three ways of making flowers, but what I decided was that this is taking enough time that I'm going to save the third method 
for my next video. So this will be part, part two. We'll have the third method. And there are the two bracelets right there. I love them, and I love making the flowers with this. I think this is so elegant. And this linen, I mean, it looks like leather, and it looks like linen fabric. It's just amazing. I love the color. I think you're going to be happy working with this. It's amazing. <laughs> I can't say enough about it. So anyway, um, next time, we will be making flowers with craft text that use napkins or rice paper. And that's a sneak peek right there. Aren't they gorgeous? So keep your eyes out because my next uh, tutorial on craft text will involve those. Okay, I will put some pictures at the end of these completed ones. And let's bring these back in to show. These are the ones, they've all been frosted with the spray. And, you know, there's so much possibility with these. Um, but I, I really prefer the Distress inks myself. But, you know, if you are a painter, you would love playing with these as well. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you look at the links down below.